Hi friends, I'm excited to share with you one of the most compelling biographies that I've read in a long time. It's called The Rise and Fall of Charles Lindbergh by Candace Fleming, published by Schwartz and Wade. For those of you who know Candy and her work, you know you're not in just for a great read. You're in for a fantastic resource for both ELA and social studies classrooms in the middle and high school levels. Here are just a few ways you might use this book. Use this book as your next round of book club books. Fleming is a master researcher, and when she crafts nonfiction, it reads like the richest of fiction. So why not have students discuss Lindbergh as a character? Who was he? What motivated him to achieve the unachievable and then dabble in the unethical? Does he change over time or not? And what does that say about him? Or perhaps students might discuss themes that emerge through the book. What makes a hero? What impact does family play in one's potential? How does the time period in which we live impact our values and, and decisions? And what role does government have to play when there are a clash in those values? The Rise and Fall of Charles Lindbergh would also be a great addition to a book club set on biographies. Fleming's own biographies on Buffalo Bill, Amelia Earhart, P.T. Barnum, and the family Romanoff would be great compliments. Or perhaps you could pair The Rise and Fall of Charles Lindbergh with Schenken's Notorious Benedict Arnold to explore how Myths about historical figures are much more complex than we make them out to be. If you're interested in weaving in research and other types of nonfiction reading, why not have students research events and time periods that Fleming introduces in this book? In groups or on their own, students could research time periods such as the Roaring Twenties, the rise of Nazism, the history of commercial aviation, the Berlin Olympics, or even FDR's presidency. Using Fleming's bibliography as a sample, students could balance their research with different types of sources, both written and non-written, primary and secondary. With their research, they could write a full-page spread or create a museum exhibit based on their time period that would give their classmates greater context about what they found. For an extended writing activity, students could make a scene from their research come to life. They could reread closely one of Fleming's scenes and notice how she uses word choice, authentic dialogue, and rich details to really make the scene come to life. Then they would use their own research to do just the same so that they could entice readers for their work. Finally, one of the most striking takeaways from Fleming's new book is that the issues that Lindbergh faced are still relevant today. Issues like celebrity and privacy, populism and isolation, innovation and risk, and science and ethics still dominate headlines today. After students explore Lindbergh's ideas and experiences with them, they might compare and contrast them to today. Who are the players? What are the issues and rights involved? Who has the power and who doesn't? Whatever the students find, you can be sure that the discussions will be rich. As you know, Fleming's writing is the perfect catalyst not only for introducing us to people in time periods that are fascinating, but to help us understand the world in which we live today.